Where's the sun at? Sonia, the line is there? Yes. Yeah. And Ken. Ken's logging in. I'm sorry. Will you start, Brian? Yes, I am starting. Let Ken, Ken come. Let him do the prayer. And let him do the, um, I'll start the devotion. And tell everybody when he's finished, Lloyd will do a devotion. And then everybody would be able to. Um, to comment at the end of the devotion. Can you see us? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You're Good morning. traveling. How is everyone doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. We're in the car, so it's a little different today. I don't know if you can see us. Yeah, uh, you're doing hello. fine. You're trying, you're trying to keep up with me. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? Good day. Okay. Well, we got a few minutes. Ken, you're going to do um, welcome, opening prayer, and your devotion, correct? Yes. Yes. And Floyd's on, but he's not um, got his mic off yet. But anyway, he's going to do a devotion after you. Okay. And then everybody can come. And then we'll have every you know public comment after. Yes. Uh, any um all right, Floyd song. I can see Floyd now. Any music or anything? Uh not really. Okay, cool. Morning. Morning, morning. Hi, good, good morning. morning. Floyd, did, you hear, did you hear that, Floyd? Is, is your power going all right there, Floyd? In Freeport? Yeah, yeah, it's doing fine. Good, yes. Yeah. I saw your text about the um, power problem. Yeah, yeah, it didn't last for too long. Okay, uh, good, good, good. I whenever, had a power outage. Whenever Ken's done, then you'll do your devotion. Yeah, he wants me to read. That. And I will, Dr. Ampha, I'll read your scripture for you. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. No, that's okay. Miss Rita wants to say hey. No, that's okay. Come on, say hey. I did. Miss Rita's yeah. waving if you can see her on a distance. Yeah. Yeah, we can see. Hey, Sister Rita. How are we doing? Get a little bit. Hi. <laughs> All right, Ken. I'm going to hand yes, it sir. off. I'm going to hand it off to you. Okay. Okay, brother. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much for this beautiful day you give us on this side of eternity one more time. Father, we come together as your children, as your people. Though we be in different places, there is no distance with you. For we know that your Spirit is everywhere dwells in each of us, individually and collectively, as the body of Christ. And so, Father, even as you did things in the past, you can do it again. And so we pray for revival this morning throughout all the nations. And while many are focusing on COVID-19, we want to focus on you. We want to focus on the working of the Spirit of God in the lives of the people. We pray that just as COVID infects people, we pray this morning that the Word of God might infect the world the same way, bringing life instead of death. For this we ask now in the name of Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Our reading is taken this morning from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 41, beginning through verse 47. That's Acts chapter 2, and I'm reading from the King James Version. Acts 2, verse 41 through 47. 
Then they that gladly received his word were baptized the same day. There were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with in one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. You know, I want to bear our direction this morning on the thought that the whole world is troubled about COVID-19. As the disciples were troubled in that time with the Roman rulership where they were under persecution and everything else. And all they were concerned about is the revival of the nation of Israel being delivered by God out of the tyranny of the Roman rule. Their only problem was the government of Rome over them. And as a result, they were focused on the wrong things. And we can get so focused today on the problem with COVID that we forget the real problem. And that's the sin and destruction in the world. Because whether COVID comes or goes, Many are going to die without Christ. And they're going to be in destruction. They'll be going to a devil's hell, which was not prepared for them, but for the devil and his angels. But our focus should be on the kingdom of heaven because that's what Jesus came preaching. There were all kinds of diseases, sickness, leprosy, and all kind of other problems going on in Israel at that time. But Jesus was more concerned about one thing, the kingdom of heaven. And even after his resurrection, the disciples were asking him the question if he would restore unto them at that time the kingdom. And so they still had the kingdom of Israel on their mind. They still never got it. And so today, we don't, we don't want to lose the real focus. The biggest problem the world has is not COVID problem, but a sin problem. Because COVID might take physical life, but sin will take life forever. And so just as the church was focused with one mind on one purpose, the gospel of Christ, the salvation of souls, I would hope that in these times when COVID is taking lives, we would see that sin is destroying a whole lot more people. As wide is the way and broad is the gate that leads to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. And narrow is the way, straight is the gate that leads to life, and few are entering in. We need to focus on the biggest problem the world has today, the sin problem. So I pray that the Spirit of God might keep us focused on the major problem of the world, sin and not COVID. And I just pray that it would give us some insight, some more stickability in prayer and concern by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. That we might seek to be filled with the Spirit so that like the time of Acts 2, we might be the instruments of revival because that's what we really need right now. We need a major revival and let it start with us.
just want to thank God for this privilege that as far as we are away from you guys, we're not far from the Holy Spirit's work, nor are we hindered from meeting. God provided a way for us to meet in this fashion. Uh, whereas we would be thinking about driving all the way there into South North Carolina to meet with you guys. But God had a better way out. And I want to praise him for that this morning. The Lord bless. And may I add that we are far away. Right now we're in Schenectady, which is about three hours away from home. So we're up north. We're in the car, and, but we still find it um, possible to be able to do this. So we're very thankful for that. <coughs> We want to thank you for making the sacrifice. To be oh, it's a, it's a privilege, my brother, a privilege. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Right, any comments there? Any? Oh, no, not really. It says that uh, uh, Brother Ken was right on target. I'm going to go ahead with the reading and then you continue. Yes, please, please. All right. I'm reading not the whole Bible, but just one book of the Bible. Uh, Ken, uh, I appreciate you. I, I was praying for you while you were driving and praying, hoping that you were watching and praying and not closing your eyes and praying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for praying, brother. Thank you for praying. Actually, we're not. We stop, we reach already, so we've stopped to do the service. Okay, all right. All right, I'm, re I'm reading from the book of Jude. Jude, the servant of, our, of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Christ Jesus and called, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common situation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto all saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, of that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation hath he reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after the strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers, defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. For he speak evil of those things they know not. But what they know naturally is brute peace, in those things they corrupt themselves, woe unto them. For they have gone in the way of Cain and ran after the and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the golden gate saying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried away carried about of winds, trees whose free fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, 
foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts. Their mouths speak at great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember the, ye the words which are spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you they should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And some have compassion making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Here ends the reading of God's word. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother DeWalker. Um, I have chosen as a text today, Contending for the Faith. And um, <coughs> we read uh, chapter, the, the, the only book uh, in Jude. But I want to highlight verse 3 that says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you, of the common salvation. And I, I might add, that is what we already have, we're already aware of. It was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to you. To whom does Jude speak? Jude here was addressing those that were sanctified, those that were set apart and declared holy, those that are consecrated by God, the Father, and those that are preserved, hidden in Christ, and called to be his disciples. So Jude was addressing this, this group of people. These persons Jude was addressing, you and me, who are called by Jesus Christ to be his followers. And he said, we must earnestly contend for the faith. Earnestly contend for the faith. Let's look at the word contend. The Greek word for contend is epagonizimia. Pardon me if I don't pronounce it correctly. But that's the Greek word for, 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 um, for content. And in that word, we see agon. We see the word agon. From which we get the English word agonize. Agonize. And by adding the prefix epa, it intensifies the meaning. So to contend is an intense, agonizing struggle. Intense, agonizing struggle. I also could word earnestly. The word earnestly is added to convey intensive force with sincere and intense conviction. 
seriously. However, in order to contend for the faith, we must consider these, these preconditions. And one is we must be convinced of the faith. We must be convinced of the faith. We must know that we know that we have received salvation. We must know. So we must be convinced. Not only we must be convinced, but we must also comprehend the faith. We must be able to understand the reason why we are saved. We must be able to, to, to understand why God delivered us, why God saved us. We were saved to win others to Christ. So not only must we be convinced and we must comprehend, we must also be committed to the faith. Committed to the faith. This must, this must, um, this must become our lifestyle. We must be so committed to the faith that it becomes our lifestyle, a part of our everyday living. Not only must we be committed, we must also consider our faith greater than our own life. We must be willing to leave the comforts of our home and to go out there into the world. We must be prepared to leave mother and father, and brother and sister and wife and husband. We must be so committed that we must, be we, must be, we must consider our faith greater than our lives. So we looked at we must be convinced, we must, be, we must comprehend our faith, we must be committed to the faith, we must consider our faith greater than our own lives. Now why do we need to earnestly contend for the faith? Just have a few thoughts here on that. And the first one is because the world is compromised. Because the world is compromised. Its systems are flawed and crooked. Not only is the world compromised, but the church is also compromised. And very often we hear of, of pastors and preachers and apostles and so on indulging in behaviors that are not in keeping with the word of God. So the world is compromised, our church is compromised, and also the political system is compromised. Our political leaders don't follow the word of God for guidance anymore. You know of times when, when um, some of our political leaders would quote scriptures from the Bible and um, try to live the scriptures out. But in these days and in these times, we forget the Bible. Our leaders forget the Bible. So, not only is the world compromised, our church compromised, and our political system compromised, but also our schools are compromised. And um, so the education system is compromised as a result. I, I just heard you last night that there was this, uh, this guy who was talking about some one of the countries in the world that allow kids six years old to write love letters to same-sex partners, inviting them to marry at some later date. So our school system is compromised also. Not only is our school system compromised, but our employers are compromised also. Some of them want their employees to do their dirty work for them. So the world is compromised, the church is compromised, our politics is compromised, our schools are compromised, our employers are compromised. And so for all these reasons, and even more, of course, we are asked to, by to, to contend for the faith, honestly contend for the faith. We must struggle, we must agonize, we must fight real hard to keep the faith. Because the devil is working overtime. He is working very hard. And from all angles, 
to make us think that our faith is irrelevant. That's what he's doing. He's working to make us feel that our faith is irrelevant. The world is calling wrong, right. And right, wrong. It's turned upside down. And therefore we must contend earnestly for the faith. If we look at Romans 1, I'll read it. Romans 1, 21 to 25, it says, Because that, and of course they were talking about some other issues before. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their, in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into image made of, to corruptible man and to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up to uncleanness, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Who changed the truth of God into a lie? And, and worship the, and serve the creator, sorry, worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Now imagine persons taking the word of God and changing it to suit their own selves and their own values, and misplaced values. Changing the word of God into a lie. Now, that's, that's the reasons, reasons for that, like that we need to, earnestly contend for the faith. And then also in 2 Peter 3 and verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We are to contend for the faith. We have to contend for the faith so that all, by all means, we can save some. If we don't hold on to the faith and earnestly contend for it, we will find ourselves believing what the world believes. We have to contend for the faith, earnestly contend for the faith. So we dealt with... Um, we dealt with... The, the preconditions for contending with the faith. And we looked at convinced of our faith. We must apprehend our faith. We must be committed to the faith. And we must consider our faith greater than our lives. And then we ask the question, why do we need to contend for the faith? And the answer is, because the world is compromised. Because our church is compromised. Because the politics is compromised because our schools are compromised and because of our So for these reasons, we honestly contend for the faith. I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Well, we want to thank you for sharing today. I want to thank you and I want to thank Ken and uh, based on those messages, uh, let's remember to pray for one another. And now I'm going to ask you to share a few thoughts of your own. And when you share a few thoughts on your own, then we're going to wrap up. We have uh, Lisa with us, a pastor from Greenville. Welcome, Lisa. Were you, were you able to hear us? Yes, sir. I hear you. Did you have a good service this morning? I'm sorry. What you say? Did you have a good service this morning? Oh my God, Miss Rita preached at the storm. I, the message was awesome, yeah. truly, truly awesome. And I thank God for Brother Floyd this morning. I was trying to tell y'all that for the past month we've been teaching out of the Book of Jude what it means to contend for the faith, you know, and how it tells us that certain men crept in unaware, 
you know, and for me, my mind says that for any, in order for the enemy to creep in unaware means that we've been distracted and not focused the way that we should be for the enemy to be able to creep in. And it talks about false prophets and all the different things that Brother Floyd was talking about. This is an hour where we have to be prepared to fight, to fight against the enemy. You know, and one of the most important things that we have to be aware of is that it's some of the stuff that we're dealing with is an inside job. The enemy is in the church. The enemy is in our midst. And we have to be prepared to fight against everything that the enemy is trying to do in this hour. We can't allow ourselves to become complicit to the things that the enemy is trying to do. When we accept anything that's contrary to the word, the will, and the way of God, we become complicit. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Please give our regards to the church and to the church family and to Mary especially. I will. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, mm. Sonia, I see you're on. Uh, if you can activate your microphone and share your thoughts. Uh, I don't have anything to add because I think what, what um, Floyd said was very, very clear. And, um, you know, especially that part about uh, about what that we change things um we change the truth of god into for a lie and um we worship and serve the creature rather than the creator and all along when i ever thought about that when i read that in the past i thought about them worshiping calves and you know remember when the children of Israel worship the calf and all of that but we are the creatures too and I think sometimes we don't deal with people the way we should because we hold them in high esteem you know and we see them as more special than we are and so we not physically bow down to them but we bow down to them in terms of um, many ways I, I don't have to go through those but that's another thing that struck me as he was talking I said and I looked in the Jewish Bible and the word for the creature is habria, and the word for the creation right that, 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 that's, that's the, the, the creature and the rather than the creator the, you know habria means the creature or the creation and we are the creation of almighty god rather than habore the creator he who has created us and it hit me i don't know if it hit anybody else but it hit me and i have to be careful about my i now have to look at my relationships and make sure that i am not worshiping a creature whether it be, I know it's not four legged, but it could be a two legged creature. And we have to be ex I have to be extremely careful about that, you know, uh, because it hit me. So I'm, I'm just sharing that. Thanks, Floyd, because yeah. that was wonderful. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Baba, Dolores, anything you want to add? Hello? Yes, yes, anything? You uh, about not saying it. Okay. You want to say anything? Yes. No. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Good service. Uh, Rita, anything you want to add? I, not, I don't need to add anything. I think it was well said and laid out. Thank you. I want to go to go back to New York and ask um, Sis and Tyron if they have anything they want to add. Anything? No. No, no, Brad. Sis, sis is sis is out for a minute. Oh, okay. Well, yes. Ken, Ken, I want to thank you for your message. It's so very timely. Brings yes. in focus what is important to us. Yes. Keep things of eternal values. Exactly. Build your folks on things eternal. Thank you. 
Yes, sir. You're welcome, brother. Did you want to say anything, Ty? No, no. thanks. So we enjoyed um, having you, seen you guys again and listening to the service. Although we are in Schenectady, we are just parked in front of the house. So. Oh, okay. Uh, Great. Thank you. I, I wanted to say it, uh, to Brother Ken, too. He was right on target. Um, we need to change our focus and focus on winning souls for the kingdom. That's very easy. Um, we've been through many kind of wars back home, you know. Mm -hmm. We've been through the Chinese riots. We've been through um, the uh, gas riots. So we're used to these type of wars where guns come into play. Many people get killed. And then we also used to the, um, the, the war, party wars, you know, where people clash over party, people getting killed left and right. Um, so, so I know it's easy to lose the focus. But sinners are dying around us left and right without COVID. And so um, we need to see the real enemy is sin. COVID is just, just one physical enemy. But the greatest enemy we all have, like in the time of the, the disciples. And you know, even in that time, it never stopped them from having a revival where souls were being saved just because of the fullness of the Spirit. And so that's where we need to be. We, we need to be, you know, surrendered to where the Lord can use us just the same, no matter what. Thank you, Brother Ken. Uh, Marlon and Freeport, is there anything you want to say? And then I'm going to ask Brian to say a few words. But no, Marlon, Brother Ken. No, Brother I'm the worker. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, give our regards to the family and to the folks in Freeport. Fine. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yes. Thanks, everybody. Um, again, I'm just always amazed how um, God puts it together. You know, every even the conversation here before service, and then what was used during service, and then Lisa, what she said. She, you know, it, it's God puts it all together. We're all. It seems though, even though we're far apart and all dealing with what we're dealing with, that um, God keeps it in line. Amen. And I'm just amazed. And um, I, I just love that part of what we do, that we can, even though we may be separated, we can all come in one accord and agree. And yes. um, I, I really do appreciate that. And I, I do agree. We've got to remember what it's about and yes. go for the individual soul. And, and also remember, it's all we all we are is a conduit. Um, yes. The Holy Spirit does the work. All we do Amen. is just be used by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit does the work, and He reaps the, reaps the harvest. Yes. But, um, anyway, that's my two cents worth, and I do appreciate it. I hope everybody's doing great. Um, yeah, I'm going to wrap up in a few minutes. Is there anybody else who wants to add anything? I will say this um, just because it came back, because I wanted to say it and I didn't want to end up. But, you know, we're thinking about the world and the compromises that is going on. And the thought that goes through my mind is the mysteries that God has endowed in each one of us. The mystery of his power just flowing in the life of the believer. And the cause of that mystery, the reason for which God wants to empower us with all the mysteries of Christ in the life of the believer is reconciling the world unto him. That is what he has caused this to happen for. So that we can reconcile the world unto him. And we find that the compromise in the church and the deception in the church has made the church lost its path from what the real mission of the church is to do what God wants us to do and we become so consumed in ourselves that we stop preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and is preaching our own gospel 
So we want to be able to know the gospel, to preach the gospel, to live the gospel, so that we can reconcile the world unto Christ. Beware the false prophets. Yeah. Beware the false prophets. Yeah. The dark days are coming when the believers need to stand and stand on the word and let the light of Christ radiate the darkness of the world around us. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone else? Now is your chance to say something if anybody else has something they want, he or she wants to say. If not, I close off the service. Amen. All right. I'm going to close with a scripture from Floyd wanted to read, but this time I'm going to read the same scripture from the Message Bible and then close. I appreciate the comment. I think more often we can have participation like this from Floyd from Ken, so the service can be centered not only with us in Dunn, but across the globe, as it were. And yes. we can get some other folks involved. Uh, there's a minister who asked me this week if he can participate in one of our services. So I'm going to talk to him later, but uh, we can diversify the ministry and the preaching. Really yes. appreciate uh, the thought about the eternal value and uh, uh, contending for the faith. Yes. Jude was saying, I give up everything. I, it, it was necessary, it was urgent for me to write unto you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. Thank you for doing such a good job, Floyd, on that. Yes. Amen, brother. Yeah, let me, let me read, read. I'm going to read the Message Bible. The print is fine, so you'd have to bear with me. It says, but remember, dear friends, um, I'm reading towards the end of Jude. But remember, dear friends, that the apostle of our master, Jesus Christ, told us this would happen. In the last days, there will be people who don't take things seriously anymore. They'll mm. treat them like a joke. And yeah. they a religion of their own whims and lusts. These are the ones who split churches thinking only of themselves. Yes. There's nothing to them. No sign of the Spirit. But you, dear friends, carefully hold yourselves up in the most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit, staying right at the center of God's love, keeping your arms open and, uh, and outstretched. Mm. Ready for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is contending. Sorry, this is the unending life, the real life. Go easy on those who hesitate in the flesh, in the faith. Sorry, go easy on those who hesitate in the faith. Go after those who take the wrong way. Be tender with sinners, but not with the sin. The sin itself, itself stinks to high heavens. This is my closing prayer. And now unto him who can keep you on your feet, standing tall in his bright presence, fresh and celebrating to our one God, our only Savior through Jesus Christ, our Master, be glory, majesty, strength, and rule before all men, and, uh, and to the end forevermore. And remember what the scripture says, but you, beloved, build up yourselves on your most holy faith, looking for the mercies of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you, and be gracious unto you. And have a great week and enjoy his presence. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, bro. Nice seeing see you, all of you guys. Yes, okay. same, same here, sis. Good seeing you. Good seeing you. Blessings, bro. Bye-bye. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Bless you too. Yeah. Bless you too. Blessings yeah. to everyone. Uh, the joy of brotherhood.
Sister Brian. The blood yes. of sisterhood. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. Love you guys. Yes, same here. Same here. Yeah. See bye you bye. there. See you. Okay. Y'all take care. Okay, bye. Bye. you too.